This module is designed to review some of the fundamental concepts of the rhetorical situation and critical thinking that this course is built on. This review will give you a refresher on the vocabulary you find in the textbook, course modules, and major assignments. What is critical thinking? Critical thinking is linked to skepticism. Part of being critical means never accepting anything as truth without careful analysis. This is one of the most important skills you can learn in college. Being skeptical allows you to understand the complexity of ideas and articulate your own beliefs with greater sophistication. When approaching new ideas in your research, you should be skeptical of your own attitude, assumptions, and your own concept of evidence. This doesn't mean that you should second-guess yourself. It just means that in order to be an effective critical thinker, you have to be able to defend your ideas before you can begin analyzing or questioning the ideas of others and evaluating their research you must first learn to question your own attitudes assumptions and evidence the first step in skeptical criticism is investigation in order to be useful investigation needs a structure we call that structure a heuristic that may sound intimidating but all a heuristic is is a method or process of adopting ideas I like to put emphasis on the word process. One idea leads to another, and so on. We use heuristics every day for all kinds of mundane things, but when it comes to developing a research and writing process based in critical thinking, it's essential that we are conscious of the exact method we use to construct ideas. What is the relationship between heuristics and topics? In order to begin developing effective heuristics for analysis of an idea, you should try to establish its topic, or topos. In the classical tradition, these topics are definition, comparison, relationship, and testimony. In writing, these topics can sometimes translate to genres or modes. For example, the topos of definition usually applies to expository writing, like reports and news stories. On the other hand, comparison and relationship might apply to analytical or synthesis writing. What this really means is that you have to develop a heuristic, or method of writing, for each type of writing you are tasked with. What is rhetoric? We often hear the word rhetoric used pejoratively in the media to describe political speeches or other less than ethical discourse. However, rhetoric is really just using language to persuade, inform, educate, or entertain. Language is a fairly broad term. What do you think of as language? Is math rhetorical? Is science rhetorical? What about images? We'll discuss these as the course goes on. But, keep in mind that the words language and text have a much broader meaning than you're used to hearing. The rhetorical situation also relies on another trope called the rhetorical triangle. You might have heard this before. The rhetorical triangle represents the balance of ethos, pathos, and logos. If you look at the roots of these words, you might be able to define them. Logos, with the root log, refers to the appeal to facts or to logic. In rhetoric, logos represents things that we know to be true. We know that the earth is round, and we know that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Pathos, with the root path, refers to the appeal to emotion or to feeling. Pathos represents the use of rhetorical techniques designed to create feelings in the audience. Ethos is the appeal to authority with it being the root. Ethos represents your credibility and trustworthiness as an arguer. The rhetorical situation is the balance of these three appeals. What the balance looks like can vary based on occasion. We'll talk about these more as the course goes on. The most fundamental part of the rhetorical situation is you develop heuristics to investigate and criticize your attitudes, means that you must consider how each of the things in this list impact your perception. Some qualities that might impact the rhetorical situation include age, experience, gender, location, culture, politics, religion, and education. I'm sure you can think of other things. These are biases. These are assumptions that you probably hold close to your heart, but don't necessarily think about how they impact your perception of the world around you and the way you try to persuade others around.